Bill Carroll, Zenith 62 Media. I'm still working through my watch list for the 2024 2025 college football season and, of course, the draft to follow. And uh, I come to a couple of really fascinating players. One, a transfer, one who's going to stick and stay at a school that has a really good reputation at his position and also has produced some really good quarterbacks as well. So I'm going to start with Ethan Chisholm III from Eastern Washington. And, of course, you can guess who he gets compared to. He gets compared, of course, to Cooper Cup. Uh, he's not quite as big as Cooper Cup. People underestimate how big Cooper Cup is. But he's a good-sized guy. He's right about 200 on the nose, maybe 199, maybe 201, but right up 200 pounds. Probably going to come in at about 5'10", 5'8", 5'10", 3 quarters, but solidly built. He's really a little bit more like Wayne Corbett than he is like... I should stop just comparing him to white wide receivers, but okay. Um, uh, Jameson Crowder, there. There you go. Um... But faster, right? He's a run a little faster. He's a pretty good track athlete, was a good baseball player, good all-around athlete in high school. And shout out to the Eastern Washington Athletic Communications Group. They have a fantastic website, and they do a great job of putting like, a tremendous amount of information on their athletes, which scouts like. Uh, you're helping your athletes. You're helping your players to get scouted by putting a lot of information on the website. He is a guy who's chasing, of course, records, uh, many of whom were set by Cooper Cup. Right now he's at 2,541 career receiving yards, which is 12th in school history. He has you know, a year to go, obviously. Uh, he started, once again, as well, the COVID kids, right? He started there back in 2021, uh, his first freshman season, still made all-conference, now obviously in a shortened season, but also was a terrific punt returner, uh, nine returns for 38 yards, including a 15-yarder against Northern Iowa. And showed up, right? Had a couple of catches in every game or more in every game he played and uh, was able to, right in his debut, uh, played in seven games in two starts in that shortened season. Then in his second freshman year uh, was once again all academic. So guy gets it done in the classroom, uh, but it's again, return punts, 25 punts for 104 yards and 10 kicks for 203 yards, so an average of 20.3. So things that stood out also in that season, uh, 735 yards in receiving on 80 catches and managed to, in his second freshman year, go over 1,000 career yards. And then, of course, the year he comes onto my radar was in 2022. Once again, all academic made third team all conference and fourth team for, for Phil Steele in 10 games, uh, had 62 receptions, 607 yards, six touchdowns uh, against Sacramento State had, which a game I did watch that year, had a big game, nine receptions against them. Uh, once again, was a good pick, kick and punt return guy. Four and eight uh, return yards and average 100.9 all purpose yards per game solid in all areas didn't get a lot of big plays he was used a lot sort of the middle of the field and things like that then of course last year uh makes all conference big uh you know big sky conference all uh first team all american well third team all american with on the ac uh associate press then also fcs stats third team fcs football central third team phil Steele's fourth team, four, he's a hard grader, Phil Steele, uh, as, once again, all academic, and was a team captain. Uh, 11 games, 13 receptions, 161 yards against Idaho State, and two touchdowns. Big game against them, had four 100-yard receiving games that season, was third in the conference, 14th in the, in the country, nine receiving yards. More than seven uh, yards per catch, and moved up to third in school history in receptions. Still not a lot of huge plays down the field, but very, very productive. I, that's my big question, and I think he's fast. I just feel like you don't use him down the field a lot. I wanna see that change. He's averaged five and a half catches per game, which is second in school history. And the only reason his receiving yards aren't higher, like I said, is that he's worked the middle of the field. He works underneath a lot. He's very, uh, I want to say, I'm about to say things like crafty and sneaky. 
He's not crafty or sneaky. He's an explosive athlete. He just isn't asked to take off down the field a lot. I want to see that change. I want to see him go deep on people more often this year. That's what I'd like to see. If, if I see that, that looks like a guy that might at least push his way into drafted. Right now, he's a prior and drafted free agent on that bubble. Shout out to uh, the East-West Shrine game, who I know has him on their watch list. I could easily see him showing up and having a great week there. And then the next player I'm going to talk about on the defensive side of the ball is a transfer. And first of all, another candidate for my all-name team, Carson Primrose. Yes, does he sound like an early 19th century poet in maybe the Gothic school? Sure. But the only thing Gothic about him is his play. He can be a, a house of horrors. Uh, very quick, very powerful. Uh, he's in his grad transfer year now at Rhode Island after having a great career at Sacred Heart. Was a all-NEC second team, which is shocking to me uh, because of how good he was. But was in 12 games, had 49 tackles, two sacks, five and a half tackles for loss, following up an even bigger year the year before. And that was when he came onto my radar was 2022. Was, once again, second team, shocker again. But in those games, um, all 11 games, uh, he had four sacks, which was a team lead, and was fourth on the team in tackles, which you don't see a lot from defensive tackles. 34 tackles, including 13 solos. Um, and then, sorry. Uh, 16 solos and uh, uh, sorry, 18 solos, 16 assisted tackles. Six tackles uh, against Duquesne, which is yeah, not a bad program. Things I like about him. Uh, well, once again, classic undersized three technique, something you hear all the time. About six, maybe just over six and a half, uh, maybe six and five eighths. Probably right around 281, 282 pounds. And once again, the question is do you want, how much bigger do you want him to try to get? Do you want him to get over 300 pounds? Can he carry it? I think he can play in the mid 290s and be just fine, and that's fine. If he, 296, if he's 294, 292 even, no big deal. But he is quick and powerful, good against the run, and even better against the pass. One of the best pass rushing defensive tackles in the FCS. I think he is a top 20, maybe even top 16 defensive tackle, regardless of level of competition. And now at Rhode Island, he gets a chance to, not that he was at a bad program before at Sacred Heart, but I think maybe the people take a little more notice of him. Uh, things he should still work on, uh, hand usage, especially when you're a quote unquote smaller, you know, smaller in the in air quotes, uh, defensive tackle, you've got to really be great with your hands, efficient with your hands, tie your hands and your feet together, uh, uncoil those hips and always work powerfully. He can get moved and turned at times. You want to see him sometimes maybe widen his base a little bit, fire those feet and hands, like I said, very violently, very quickly, so that even when someone's got 15, 20, even 25 pounds on you, it negates that a little bit. Uh, he's naturally low. Uh, sometimes you might see him maybe flatten that back a little bit and, like I said, fire out on that, you know, little less than 45 degree angle, around a 45 degree angle, so that you, you know, get all that leg drive into that person. But he's a guy who can definitely play at the next level in my mind. Both these players are players that testing, and I know I say this a lot, but if you're a player anywhere below the FBS level, no matter what you've done on tape, you need to test well for NFL teams to feel like they can draft you. But both guys have draftable grades for me. I'll have two more players for you tomorrow. I'm a big fan of both players. I hope that they get to the right All-Star game. Once again, hint, hint, shout out to my friend Eric Galco at the East-West Shrine game, and of course, Jim Nagy. I'm going to bother you about, particularly Primrose, I'm going to bother you about these guys uh, and a chance to maybe see at least one of them show up at the Senior Bowl. I'll have two more for you tomorrow. Once again, Bill Carroll, Zinni 60 Media. I will see you very soon.